with the tortured question of the estate of the late Nderito Gashagwa. It is, I think, a shame that will stick on Honorable Mutuse for the rest of his no, uh, years on earth. Counsel for the Deputy President. Yes. There are very few clarifications that were directed towards you. Yes. So I'll give you five minutes. Uh, You're not I'm... responding to the clarifications by Mutuse. You're I... responding to the clarifications as sought. That, that, those are the ones honorable. I am in. Uh, so, honorable uh, Speaker, uh, there are quite a number of clarifications, especially on this uh, estate issue, which please allow me 10 minutes. All right. 10 minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Thank you. Uh, Senate. Now, <clears throat> I began my cross-examination of Honorable Mutuse yesterday with asking him how long he has practiced law and what law he has practiced. The problems you have as a Senate, as a quasi-judicial body, are born out of inexperience of legal practice. If you had practiced any succession law, I'm answering the question, I'm answering the question. I'm Order, the question. honorable senators. I'm, uh, the I'm sorry, Senator Kavindu, uh, just the, have a seat. I couldn't take that. Yes. W what is the source of this? Uh, I, I this asked comfort? him yesterday. He answered the question. Yes, uh, counsel for DP. What exactly did you say? I, I just wanted to say that the National Assembly was provided with an affidavit by the executors of the will of the late Derito Gashagwa. It is before you. It is volume number four, stated called the Father Affidavit of Nderito Gashagwa. And, uh, sorry, regarding Gashagwa. It uh, should be before you. In that affidavit, the two executors state in comprehensive detail everything concerning that particular estate. They are as follows. One, the estate property was divided in accordance with the will. The probate matter commenced and went all the way to the end to conclusion. All issues were resolved within the court case and in a sense are now res judicata. That is issue number one. Issue number two, you will find in that affidavit between pages 11 and pages 19. Who, who sought that clarification? Uh, I, I was asked, uh, the, the question was asked I, here, I think by you, Senator, uh, Senator Dulo asked. For, for DP. Do not respond to what uh, um, Honorable Mutusa said. Senator Pick Dulo. a senator's issue and respond to it. That's what I'm responding to. Exactly. So whose clarification S are S you Senator responding? Dulo asked, can you please address the question of disinheriting the widows, if Hansard could co confirm that? I believe she did. That's what I'm answering. Yes. And so the will, as I'm, as I'm explaining, does not disinherit the children or the widows or anybody else. It is merely because in the motion brought before you, there were properties listed in the motion that were part of the estate. That is the only reason this estate has become the subject of proceedings before the Senate and the National Assembly. So when you look at the will, as I've said, between pages 11 and 12, at page 13, if you have the document before you, this is volume number four, there is a long list of how this estate was divided. And I won't go through it, you'll be able to read it yourself. That's number one. Number two, you will see an affidavit by the executors, except the deputy president who did not sign this affidavit. These are the two remaining executors who have signed it, explaining between pages four and page nine, everything that was done in accordance with the law and in accordance with the law of succession and that no one's property was taken away. Senator Dulo, you know our rules. Proceed, uh, Council. Proceed. Yes. Now, I've been asked some questions about the issue of the Moranga video and about the shareholder agreements and whether two wrongs make a right. Our position is the opposite. Our position was that the address by the President in Moranga was, in fact, in confirmation of the agreements. The President was merely saying that they are implementing the agreements they agreed upon. And it was incumbent upon his deputy to assist his president in confirming that they were implementing the agreements. That is the purpose of the video. That is the purpose of those agreements. It is not to say Kufa Makanga, Kufa Dereva. I think Senator Beth asked that question. It is to say Okoeni Makanga Namuokoe Dereva. That is what we're asking you to do this morning. 
Senator, I believe, Eddie. Senate, Senator, 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 Senator Eddie Witty, my good friend, has asked about the interrelation between Articles 91, Articles 91, and Article 232, and how those interact with the agreements. If I would call your attention, um, honorable senators, to the uh, contracts themselves again, I don't know that you have them. The contracts are in volume three, and I'm referring you to page 429. At page 429, this is what the agreement said, and I'm reading, this is the primary agreement that was signed between um, UDA and between uh, uh, Fort Kenya and ANC. This is what it said. Further terms, parameters, and details of the sharing of positions of responsibility in the national government pursuant to this article shall be contained in a separate schedule to this agreement, which schedule shall be negotiated and executed before the date of the general election scheduled on 9th August. So there were subsequent agreements executed on how these shares were to be divided and to be implemented. That is issue number one. But issue number two, the parties gave themselves some room and you'll see this at page 430. This is Article 22, subarticle G. Notwithstanding the content of this article, the founding member parties hereby commit to make any adjustments that may be necessary to accommodate the development priorities of other parts of the country to ensure equitable distribution of Kenya's national resources and wealth for the benefit of every citizen and every part of Kenya. When the Deputy President takes the stand, we will be demonstrating to you with videos where both he and his uh, uh, boss, the president, went out of their way to say that the voting did not matter to how they were going to um, uh, implement the development uh, uh, agenda. I think I was asked whether there are any contracts or agreements that were signed on behalf of Mount Kenya. I did not see any. We don't have any uh, thus far. There were several parties from Mount Kenya, but they did not negotiate anything. Then, um, um, uh, uh, an important question, the, president, the, the deputy president did not say the government is a company, when you read the statements. He, he was making an example, it's like a company. It was a tool to explain a document, that's all uh, he was doing. Um, I'm pressed for time here. Uh, yes, uh, Senator Chariot asked a question about two wrongs making a right, and whether the current DP is conceding that because he did what the former DP did, that then he is guilty. Again, far from the truth. We are asserting, when you read the documents, the, 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 the documents at page 412, this is the article where the president spoke, the former uh, deputy president spoke in Moyale. This is what he said. The deputy president reiterated that he used to ask tough questions when attending the National Security Council meeting about schemes of murder. It is something that has troubled me a lot. And that is why we have put it to the Kenya Kwanza Manifesto that extrajudicial killing must come to an end. It is illegal and constitutional and offends every principle of the right of life. In law, there is no secrecy where crimes are committed or there is violation of the Constitution. The Deputy President was merely following the mentorship of the man who occupied the office before him and was not releasing any secrets that did not uh, concerns illegalities or unconstitutionality. So that deals with the question of oath of secrecy, I think that was asked. And uh, because of shortage of time, I'll allow my learned colleague, Mr. Uh, Elisha Ngoya, to come and um, answer a few questions. Thank you very much, uh, honorable senators, for your time and your attention. How many minutes, clerk? Mr. Speaker, three minutes will be enough for me. No, we need to know how much time you have. Okay. You have two minutes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ongoya for the Deputy President. Proceed, Council. Thank Proceed, you. Council. To the question whether the Deputy President is aware that county governments are distinct, our answer is simple. Count governments at national and county levels are distinct and interdependent. So the constitutional architecture is not to create pigeonholes is to create cooperative and interdependent governments. And just to bolster that argument, you will notice that the allegation against the deputy president on Nairobi River relocation is not that he destabilized Nairobi county government, is that he refused 
to support implementation of a resolution of cabinet, a national government institution. I mean, even at that level, that was the understanding that this was an intergovernmental approach to clean up uh, Nairobi River. On the question of Julian Jahenda, allow me to say this. The person who has brought Julian Jahenda in these proceedings is a deponent of an affidavit. Allow us to hold him to account on that affidavit when he comes to testify himself, because we have questions for him around this witness too. Then, uh, finally, on the question of Treetops Hotel, let this be very clear distinction. Treetops Hotel was not acquired by the company in question from KWS. Treetops Hotel was an assignment of lease. When the Kenya government gives you a lease, say 99 years, huh, you can sell that lease. So it was an assignment of lease that was already assigned by KWS to a third party. So the construction that a company associated with the deputy president, rightly or wrongly, got this property from KWS, is actually wrong. There was a completely different private property that had a lease. Then that company holding that lease assigned that lease. Thank you so much. My two minutes are over. The second witness.